I have a I have several uh, really great things that people wrote that I don't know the answer to that I thought would be great to pose to you guys because then I can write them back later as if I had answered it. So, Steal all uh, the glory. Yeah, yeah that, that's uh. Well, hey, we can hey we can definitely do that. All right, all right, Joe. I'm just kidding. Let me do that. That's that's on the spot. Yeah, that's too much. On Joe. the spot. Well, I had the question right here, so we would have covered him up anyway. This is our buddy RJ. Oh no. Okay. RJ. So we know it's, it's going to be intelligent. That's hard questions. <laughs> well, I know two things when I see RJ comedy. I know it's going to be smart, and I know I'm going to be wrong about something. So let's find <laughs> out what I was wrong about on this episode. So three days ago, RJ says, there is a way to service complex machines and get them back running right away. That's the part where I disagree. Boeing does it. Toyota does it. Ted does it. That's why I selected this question, because you were involved. You work on the best, you know your product, you limit the equipment you work on, and you stock the parts. He, he really likes you. Even the complex parts, which are I like double pole contactors. You get paid well. The equipment is as reliable as any. You have customers who are happy, and your machines are running quickly when they do fail. It's much better than working with the devil, which goes off the video title. It's just not random. He said devil, even if you know him. So, Ted, is that true? Can you get any one of your machines up the same day if it fails? Uh, the ones that I, you mean the trains that I installed? Yes. Absolutely. No I matter have, what the part. I ha well, I mean, if you run over it with your tractor, I'm probably not going to be able to fix that. Or if it is a, like I have, um, rip, I have all compressors, all motors, you know, all boards. All, That's nice. Uh, you have you every know, inverter board features. you could ever need. Do what? You have every inverter board you could ever oh, yeah. need Absolutely. in stock. Yep. Drives and everything. Yep. For, for every single one. Every single one. Joe, you were in the shop. For one thing. Did, did you see him? Well, I, yeah. I don't know if uh, he, he went wouldn't in the show basement. me that. You went in the basement and you went to one of my other rooms. <laughs> Yo, man, you're such a clown. <laughs> Anyway, there's I said, one I drive. want to see the inverter boards. And he you said, asked about no, I can't no show boards. you that. It's a drive, Joe. It's called a drive. Oh, and there's sorry. one. You don't two, drive two, it. Five tons, 18 and 20, 18, 19 and 20. One drive. Well, what is that program differently? Correct. There's a personality module. Looks a lot like a little USB plug-in. It so has, you just take that off the old one and plug it on the new one? Absolutely, yeah. What if that it, was corrupted? What if that was corrupted? Do you have that? Then you have to have the machine to program it with that I have and don't know how to work. Okay. But it. it's possible because you do have it. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I don't know how to work it. I mean, I've had to use it one time since 20, 2013. And uh, the guy, my buddy from Lawrence, that's an FSR, had to actually get on the phone with me and hold my hand to get me to use it that one time but i can take one and wipe it and reprogram it not i think that's pretty one. good then, not a corrupt you... one but a you know an unused one or whatever but but he's right the there is a you know so what what decides for the drive you know what stores the tonnage and the model and the serial number and all that is a little uh usb thumb drive looking thing that plugs on the board and they have them zip tied to the wiring harness or, or, or a little bracket inside the unit so that you don't take it off with the drive and throw it away. And then you get your new drive and put it on and say, Hey, I'm missing something. So we have those on several of the boards, the furnace boards, not the air handlers, um, the furnace boards, the outdoor unit, drives and we call them personality modules i like that i know a lot of people who are missing those and we have the yeah i mean or i know some people that are corrupt as well but oh yeah i got a virus have, i do have everything that would now the units i sell now i don't sell the so-called two-stage unloading compressors because they're such junk so i've maybe got one or two of those in stock just because they were you know i happened to get them in a scratch and dent forklifted unit or something but as far as stock goes for the stuff that i actually sell 
I've got every, I actually have the whole every blower housing where I can just plug and play. Warranty work I take very seriously. And to me, it's so amazing it that you have all that stuff. I would, and it's not that I don't believe you, I would love to see where you keep it. Just to see that area of your shop and see all that crap there's everywhere. A, there's a couple of facilities and it's very organized and there's walls of shelving with all of the blowers. I mean, all the Tams, the Tims. Uh, there's some legacy stuff there. I even have some even package unit blowers, all of them. I've probably got, I don't know. Um, Joe will stop me if I exaggerate. So I'll probably say 60 or so blowers, maybe 65 complete blower assemblies. I've probably got another 30 motors that are in boxes. And then I've got probably close to about maybe 75 or 80 um, scratch and dent as is units that I buy and ride around all the warehouses and buy them up. Oh, man. So evaporator coil, let's just go all the way. Eva no, evaporator coils? No. no. Condenser coils? No. I, I have a few of the popular, but like we're talking about every part. No, I don't have every part for evaporator coils. That's pretty good. But you got leak stop. Absolutely not. It's not allowed anywhere near in my shop and will never be used. Fantastic. Mm -hmm.